Penn State ended last year on top of the world with an Atlantic 10 championship and an NCAA berth. This year, the Nittany Lions are in transition, waiting for their Big Ten initiation next year. Tonight's test comes from one of their new rivals, Ohio State. The seventh-ranked Buckeyes are stacked, boasting 11 returning lettermen, led by all-everything Jimmy Jackson. He's joined by a strong support staff, including point guard Mark Baker and scoring threat Jamal Brown. A rivalry in the making, next. in Columbus, Ohio, where tonight the Penn State Nittany Lions are in town to battle the seventh-rated Ohio State Buckeyes. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This is Clark Kellogg. And Ohio State has won 24 games in a row here at home, but they have not really been tested this year. They will tonight against Penn State, a team that returns four or five starters from last year's club that made it to the NCAA tournament and beat UCLA. Well, this team, when you talk about their four returning players, the two cornerstones are Freddie Barnes and Monroe Brown, senior backcourt players that have been constants in Penn State success. They can beat you with penetration, or they can beat you with good defense, picking your pocket. The key for them tonight is how they handle the pressure. Freddie Barnes talks about that. The main thing we have to do is be strong with the ball and hit the open man immediately. Um, I think some of the things that gonna, uh, we're going to have to do to beat the press is give a lot of ball fakes and get their interceptors moving and then try to hit the long pass. I think that's going to be very important for us. It will also be important for Penn State to get great play from Deron Hayes, their forward. He has to give him 15 to 18 points a game, and he must cover all-American Jimmy Jackson, who will be awfully tough tonight. When you talk about Jimmy Jackson, you talk about the complete package. Power windows, power steering, CD player. He can do it all. 6'5", 220. He can eat glass on the offensive board. He can create his own shot with his great ball handling ability. He talks about how he approaches his work on the hardwood. I think I try to play tricks with a lot of people by maybe not coming out looking to score at the very beginning of the game, by looking to, uh, to you know, get my teammates in the game, and that makes the, the defense relax a little bit, and that's when I can go at them and take my shots. And sometime tonight, Jimmy Jackson will pass my partner in the Ohio State scoring charts. Not bad. Not too bad at all, but he'll never catch me on the glass. Never. <laughs> all right, it's Ohio State and Penn State. We expect a good one. We'll come back right after this. Arena for the first meeting between Penn State and Ohio State in 16 years, December 7, 1975. Well, the Nittany Lions are coached by Bruce Parkhill in his ninth year. He has 127 wins at Penn State. And he will show a lineup to the Buckeyes that looks like this. Deron Hayes, who we told you all about, who will be covering Jimmy Jackson, who will not only have that responsibility, but he's given him 13 points per game. He needs to do more than that tonight. Ohio State, they are coached by Randy Ayers. Third year, his record is 51 and 18. That Penn State starting lineup will show Randy a lot of tests, particularly under pressure. Randy goes with a very veteran outfit, four seniors and one junior. Mark Baker is one of the Big Ten's top point guards, but the Buckeyes need more scoring from Mark. Jamal Brown, an outstanding three-point shooter. He's a 6'4". Now, David Deggett's Clark Kellogg, you think will be a key part of this game. Why? Simply because he's bulked up. He's about 230 pounds, and he could give Bill Robinson some problems inside if Penn State is able to effectively execute their half-court offense. Deggett has the ball now, and Jet is covering him. He turns and fires in that low post down near the baseline and scores. And Penn State has the early 2-0 lead. This is the All-American Jimmy Jackson. Dizzing it to Chris John. Baker's their point guard, and he has the ball now. Just what we expected from Penn State. They're going to show Ohio State some zone. The Buckeyes, although shooting extremely well from three-point range, are still somewhat streaky in their perimeter shooting. And Baker is one man they'd like to see take more shots. Brown will be short. Jet offensive rebound. Cannot get it back in. 
Well, they got two offensive rebounds there, but could not finish it. Important for Ohio State to score in order for them to put on the full court pressure. Brown with the steal, and he'll take it all the way. He now will see the full court pressure. Important for Penn State to be strong with the ball and reverse the ball. Freddie Barnes, senior guard, to break that pressure. Clark, you were saying one way that they can break the pressure is to play good defense and disallow Ohio State to make those shots. Stepping on the baseline was Deron Hayes, number 24, a 6'6 junior from Lakeland, Florida. And Bruce Parkhill. His brother Barry, the All-American guard at Virginia years ago. Penn State showing man to man. They'll mix it up quite a bit here tonight, trying to keep Ohio State off balance. Jackson against Hayes. Nice pass inside to Robinson, who cannot finish it. But Bill sends it back out to JJ, who misses from three. And Ohio State not shooting well to start this game. Look for Penn State to try to swing the ball from side to side, get four or five, four or five passes at least, and then attack the goal. Down low, that gets blocked by Bill Robinson and out of bounds. Big Bill at seven feet tall, and he is in there to set screens, play a little defense, and hit the boards. You know that's not a backcourt violation. You're allowed to do that in college basketball. Hayes with the pull-up. He scores, and Penn State will take the lead. It's 4-2, to two, Nittany Lions. One way to negate a good offensive player is to attack him at the defensive end. Very important for Deron Hayes to make Jimmy Jackson work, to maybe get into his fuel tank a little bit so he doesn't have as much to work with at the offensive end. And at the end of the game when he is so very difficult. We had that game USC and Ohio State and he was sensational. Well, he travels here. And in the contest against USC, Jimmy Jackson goes one for eight from the floor in the second half when it really mattered. He hit seven of eight shots. Well, I'm sure if you're Randy Ayers or Jimmy's teammates, you would like to see Jimmy spread his production out more evenly over the course of the game. Although you love for him to step forward in the clutch, You'd like to see him maybe get started a little earlier in the first half. Well, Deron Hayes in his last game went for 23 points against Marshall, and he has been up and down this year, but if they can get him going, Ohio State will have trouble. Jimmy Jackson inside with the basket and a chance at a three-point play. See, we talked about his versatility. He'll go out and play the point guard position some. So strong inside. Great catch clean catch of the basketball and an immediate attack of the goal that allows him to get it up and down and he drew the foul I think that foul was on Deggins and Jackson has a three-point play and the Buckeyes are within one Penn State only commits 12 turnovers. Very well coached by Bruce Parker, but Ohio State forces 23. And Bruce was saying, if we can keep that number to right around 12 to 14, well, yeah, we've got a chance. See, this Ohio State pressure is not the kind of pressure that is going to constantly trap you. They're going to put one strong thrust on, and if you beat that, they're going to settle back into their half-court defense. Mal Brown was hammered down near the baseline. They call an offensive foul. Against Brown is setting himself nicely was David Deggett at senior center. Dave Deggett makes two great plays. He scores at the opposite end. Look at the hustle here. He beats everybody back, gets the position on the baseline. Did an excellent job getting there. That's just great hustle to score at one end and then draw the charge at the other. There's Monroe Brown. They've got the three on two. And Bill Robinson has his second block of tonight. Well, Bill Robinson, not a shot blocker, although he leads the club in that category, had nine coming into tonight's game. Jamal Brown trying to chase this one down, but Monroe Brown cheats back and almost intercepts. Buckeye showing man to man. Penn State will be very patient in the half-court offense. They'll run Deron Hayes along the baseline. 
and then try to post up Deggett's inside. Do you think they'll stay in the man? Penn State is not a great outside shooting team. Deggett's out hustling Gent for the basketball, and then he'll bring it back because he's got a new 45. Blocking foul along the baseline against the Buckeyes. And Bill Robinson gets the call, and Randy Ayers is upset, yelling at his defense. He wants a timeout. And we'll take time out here. 15-51 to play first half. The Nittany Lions up on Ohio. Justin, of course, uh, we won't know that until he starts playing, and then he has to juggle uh, the books and the basketball, the social life, uh, uh, the total uh, uh, environment uh, at that time. But so far, he, he's been a solid individual for us. He's going to have his good and bad days, just like everybody else in our program. And that's the last time you'll see Lawrence Funderburk in street clothes playing at Ohio State, hopefully. He will be available next week against Michigan State, one of the most talented players in the country coming out of high school three years ago. Went to Indiana, quit there, and now is back home in Columbus, Ohio. He is a big-time talent, can play inside and out, and they really need for him to come in and be a factor in the paint area for him at both ends of the floor. Barnes with a long lead pass, Jamal Brown steals it. And there is a turnover against the Nittany Lions. Brown comes right back to bank it in, and a big switch for Ohio State as they cut that lead to one. Penn State not having any trouble at all with the Ohio State pressure. Good floor spacing and taking it from one side to the other, and therefore they're able to get into their half-court game. Well, those seniors really make a difference. And now they made back-to-back -back turnovers. First, Freddie Brown's a senior, and now Monroe Brown a senior, and Jamal Brown made him pay for it the last time. You know, in a game when you're trying to limit possession, as the Nittany Lions would like to do, turnovers become far more magnified than in a game when you're back and forth, back and forth. And that usually is a reverse situation. Penn State has not been shooting the ball well. Ohio State has been sensational this year, better than 50%. Brown misses, so they're under 30% at 3 of 11 from the floor. Boy, Jamal, Jamal Brown comes in shooting 67%, and he's quite aggressive here in the early going offensively. Monroe Brown inside the three-point arc, and it's tapped out to Mark Baker. Baker wants to go, and Barnes comes. Now, that will be something to watch in this game. The guard play, and will they get into foul trouble because Penn State not really deep in the backcourt? They really aren't. Michael Jennings, as we take a look at Mark Baker, they call him Shake. He's going to give a little pause and park move, but he didn't park Freddie Barnes that time. That's an excellent play by Barnes to attack the ball. Too often you see young players just let the dribbler go all the way to the paint. Jimmy Jackson, he nails it from outside. But to finish my thought in regards to the depth or lack of for Penn State, Michael Jennings, a guard at 6'5", very athletic and active, may be lost for the season with a hamstring problem, and they miss him dearly because he can play both guard positions and relieve Barnes and Monroe Brown, who both are averaging 36 minutes a game. Brown just took that last shot and nailed it. Jimmy Jackson falls down but stays put so he doesn't travel. Brown. Jackson will take the three and score. He has eight in the game. He is seven away from shattering Clark Kellogg's scoring mark here. <laughs> and we will keep you posted, Clark. Where are you shooting, man? You are here. It's history. just a matter of time. It's <laughs> over for me in the scoring column. Ah, but the memories. <laughs> There's some fun ones. A foul against Chris Gent who's been a very talented senior from Sparta, New Jersey. One of the great things about him, where do you play him when Funderburk becomes available? He has already told Randy Ayers, hey, I don't care where I get my 25 minutes. You can start me, you can bench me. Well, I'm going to speculate here. I would think when that guy comes back, Lawrence Funderburk, quite dapperly attired, I might add. <laughs> but when he comes back, you might see him and Bill Robinson on the floor at the same time. And therefore, Gent goes to the bench as a spark in that six-man role. 
it certainly will give Randy Air some flexibility, and he'll just have to see what rotation works best for his unit. Degich ties the game at 12. Here's Baker along the baseline. They want him to shoot the ball more. Well, he needs to get himself aggressive at the offensive end as Gent now whistle for the technical, reaching over the end line and knocking the ball away from, I think it was Freddie Barnes. Well, Randy Ayers will complain, but Gent gets the technical foul call. Our officials are Randy Drury, Nate Humphrey, and Art McDonald. And Barnes to the line. Where he shoots 81%. Well, you know, this game is going just about the way Penn State would want it to go. When I looked at keys for Penn State, obviously you must handle the Buckeyes' pressure. But more importantly for Penn State, is a good early start. And so far, they've gotten that. Bruce Parkhill's team fell behind 16-0 to Illinois, came back to win. And but Illinois. they fell down 17-3 by to Georgia and got ripped. And there's a travel by Freddie Barnes. Right now, they're tied at 14 with the seventh-ranked team in the country. Well, this is the first of a triple header on ESPN, and we have a good showcase coming your way next as Purdue goes against North Carolina in the land of the Tar Heel, and they are strong. Sports Center at 11 o'clock, followed by Weber State and Montana. Jackson was trying to bounce it to Gent, who was posting up on David Deggins. 12 21 to play, first half. Steve Fiziak and Clark Kellogg at St. John Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Randy Ayers. Leaning over right next to a player he'll get next week, Lawrence Funderburg. Very important for people not to expect too much from Lawrence too soon. You have to remember, he hasn't played in over two years. And I don't care how much practicing and weight training you're doing, there's no substitute for competition at this level. He's got 10. And there's no substitute for great individual talent. Oh, and look at that, he was grabbing his left knee. He's limping just a bit. Monroe Brown backing away. Jimmy moving a little better right now. Baker with the rebound. He's got Jen. And Chris can't make it go. Steve Hall with a nice play to knock it back out deep to Jimmy Jackson. I wonder if Jimmy may have taken a knee to the knee or a knee to the thigh on his last two. And look at this. Shake and Bake Baker is beginning to do just that. Well, I talked to him prior to the game after this morning shoot around, and he said he was ready to step on the offensive gas pedal, but he's bothered by a lack of practice time recently because he had the flu last week. Clark, that's not the first thing he said to you. The first thing he said to you, oh no, Clark Kellogg's here. <laughs> well, let's see, we have a shot of uh, Jimmy Jackson in that left knee. I wonder if he got a knee to the knee. Well, the Buckeyes have been on me since I got here because you said, as you said, the first thing they said to me was oh, and Clark three. Kellogg is around 0-3. Oh, Two games I did, the USC game about 10 days ago, Michigan State a year ago, and then I was in, in street clothes at the Purdue game last year, and all they can remember is they lost all three. Jimmy Jackson, this might have been the play that he was knocked a little bit. Oh, I really couldn't tell what happened from that. Steve Fizia, Clark Kellogg at St. John Arena. Jimmy Jackson went to the sideline. Randy Ayers said, are you okay? He said, yes, coach, I want back in there. He is still in the game. Ohio State holding onto a five-point lead on Penn State. Ohio State showing a different look. One, two, two, three-quarters court that time, and Penn State did a nice job to, to break the pressure. Monroe Brown now moving off to that point guard position. And they also will check in there with Steve Wiseman, a 6'2", 165-pound sophomore from Dallas, Texas. In the lane, it's Wiseman with the bucket. He has not played that many minutes this year, but he's getting an early go tonight. Freddie Barnes getting a break here in the first half. But with Penn State maintaining pretty good contact here, Bruce Parkhill using this time to give Freddie Barnes a quick blow. John Dietz is in the game, and so is Matt Gaudio. And Ohio State will have the basketball. 
There's Matt Gaudio, number 42, a 6'7 freshman. Really talented player, but he's been so beaten up. As a matter of fact, last week busted his nose, and he said he felt fine, didn't want to wear the mask tonight. He plays with chronic back pain as well, has a couple of herniated or degenerating discs, I guess, and also took a knee to the thigh, so he's pretty banged up. West Virginia's player of the year last year in high school. Brown almost with a five-second call. Claudio down low, Deggets. He'll back his way in. Jackson with the rebound. He averages better than five a game. Mismatch here. If Baker would have looked to take advantage of it. Jackson double teamed and dribbled it almost off his knee as Monroe Brown was able to reach in there and slap it out of bounds. So the Buckeyes will send in Alex Davis, number 20, and also Jamie Skelton, number 15. Skelton from Dayton Meadowdale. Boy, Money Brown fronting Jackson, and then Dave Deggett comes over to give help. He is a marked man and draws extra attention. Skelton. Throws it away. He tried to hit Jimmy Jackson, who he thought was going to go baseline, but Jimmy was staying out in the wing. So it's 19 to 16. Ohio State with the lead. 9:34 remaining first half. Jamie Skelton, really an excellent on-the-ball defender. He'll stay right in New Jersey as you take a look at him defending Monroe Brown. Everybody crying for an over and back. He stepped over, but never took the ball with him. See, with this backcourt, Davis and Skelton, Ohio State actually gets a little more aggressive defensively on the perimeter. Deron Hayes back in the game and looking for a shot and makes it. I thought he was a little off balance and uncomfortable holding the basketball, but he nails it to cut the Ohio State lead to one. Penn State stays in that zone. Jackson. Brown rebounds. And the Nittany Lions with a chance to reclaim the lead. For Davis and, Davis and Skelton really do a great job pressuring the basketball. Deron Hayes. This time too long. You know, you look at their numbers, Ohio State, they average 92 points per game. You think they run all the time, but it's really a control break. They really don't look to run. A running team, to me, is a team that not only runs off turnovers and misses, but runs after mates. I mean, that's the mark of a true running team, and the Buckeyes don't do that. Jet down low got pushed by Gaudio. There's Matt Gaudio, one of the top players in Virginia, West Virginia, excuse me, as a matter of fact, their player of the year in the state of West Virginia last year when he averaged 24 and a half points and 13 and a half rebounds. Barnes comes back in for Penn State and coming up this weekend we have a great NFL showcase to bring your way 1130 on Saturday it's game day and then we'll have prime time Saturday night followed by same situation on Sunday Jimmy Jackson with three he has 13 now. If there's a question about Jimmy Jackson's game, and there aren't many, it would be his consistency in shooting the ball on the perimeter. And so far tonight, and even actually all season long, he's really shown his ability to knock down the 18-footer. Jamie Skelton coming back in to join Alex Davis. Jimmy Jackson, the leader, he's talking with his teammates. And he has hit two threes in this game already. We have a time on the floor, seven minutes and 42 seconds to play. In the first half, 22 to 18, Ohio State. Penn State saying Ohio State is the best team we have played maybe ever. They just keep pouring it on you and wear you down. They have not gotten one of those great Ohio State runs we have come to see so often in the Big Ten. Boy, he's done an outstanding job, especially the last few years. The last three seasons, 20 win seasons for, for Penn State and then three postseason appearances. You've got two of the classier coaches in all of college basketball here in Bruce Park here at Penn State and Randy Ayers, head of the Buckeyes. Took him to a Big Ten championship last year. 
young man from Southwestern High School in Detroit, one of the great high school programs, Elton Carter grabbing his own miss, but then committing the foul. Been bothered by that left knee. I saw him with the, with the heat pack on it prior to the game. So you just wonder how long and how effective he can go. Chris Gent back in with Jimmy Jackson. Alex Davis, Jamie Skelton, and Steve Hall. So Ohio State going small. Key juncture here, Steve. Largest lead has been five for the Buckeyes. Penn State has maintained contact and basically executed their game plan pretty well. Now the Buckeyes looking to, to maybe get it to half a dozen or, or seven with the three. Jackson from the right side. It won't go. <laughs> Dave Deggett using that extra 25 pounds he's put on in the last couple of years quite well to pull in that current. Yeah, the weight program has really been good. As a matter of fact, Monroe Brown started the season wearing number 52 because he couldn't fit into his old number 15. He had gotten so big around the shoulders and he knocks down the three there. And it's a one-point game again. Inside six and a half to play first half. Well, a lot of people may be surprised, but you and I talked, and we felt that Penn State had a solid start because of the nature of how they play. They're pretty patient, they're experienced, they're disciplined, that they could give the Buckeyes a little trouble. And that's been the case so far. Gent with the three-pointer. It's 25-21 Buckeyes. And once again, they are hitting the three with consistency. I mean, they've shot 48% from three-point range this year. Well, I may have to give them their proper due because I talked to Jamal Brown and he said he wanted some respect from me in regards to his <laughs> shooting. And so far, they've earned it. Barnes had the ball partially knocked out of bounds. You know, you get a player like Lawrence Funderburk as we take a look at Bruce Parkhill, but Funderburk may give him a, a, that inside threat to free up Jamal Brown. Oh, no question about it. You need balance. And again, he's a very talented player, left-handed, can shoot it from 15 to 18 feet, can block shots, run the floor, and told me today that he's a ptp -er. <laughs> So he's waiting for Dick Vitale to come in here next week. That will be his debut. Jimmy Jackson. Boy, Jimmy a little more assertive offensively here in the first half, recognizing his team struggling just a little bit, looking to step it up himself. So we saw him in that USC game in the second half actually play point guard and bring the ball up the floor, break the pressure, and everybody clear out and let J.J. go one-on-one. -on -one. But USC won that game 79-77 in a thrilling overtime matchup where Jimmy Jackson had 28 points and Harold Miner, the great guard for USC, had 31. And both those players have such respect for each other. Tom Brandewey comes in to join the front line of the Buckeyes with Bill Robinson. Deron Hayes hits from 15. We have a whistle and a violation in the lane. The basket should count, and it will. Boy, Deron Hayes loves to operate foul line extended and below. His favorite areas are the elbows and the baseline. Really an excellent mover without the ball and a nice catch the ball spot up shooter is Deron Hayes. He's having a good first half. He's got eight now. He averages 13. He averaged 15 when he was first team Atlantic Coast last year. Bill Robinson got free. Where was the defense that time? Barnes looking to break the pressure. He gets double team. Finally escapes. Anytime you're trapped on the sideline, the diagonal pass is available if you can make it. Hayes again. Oh, he missed the bucket by a good foot and a half. There he is, Mark Baker. Buckeyes have their biggest lead of the game, 29-23, 4-13 to play first half. Deggett's blocked by Robinson, his third block of the game. And the Buckeyes will have the basketball. Boy, Bruce Harkill, Bart Parkhill thought Deggett's got fouled. Let's take a look. Boy, Robinson did a nice job there just to bother the shot. 
without fouling. And it looks like the ball may have gone off a of Buckeye on the baseline there. Crowd standing and cheering. Big reason why Ohio State has won 24 straight games here. Robinson with the hook. And Deggett's had Robinson go over his back, so a good seal off by David Deggett's. And Robinson picks up the foul. His third of the game, and he may have to take a seat as we have a timeout on the floor. 3.45 to play first half. Ohio State leads Penn State 29-23. Join their largest lead of six points here in the first half. Aaron shot by Deron Hayes leads to a Jimmy Jackson rebound, and he'll take it to length and find the streaking Mark Baker. Explosion to the rack. Mark it up. I was hoping he could get that the Clark Kellogg flush. Oh, you got to turn it over if you <laughs> want to hear the flush. You got to turn it over. Monroe Brown back at the point guard. If you've noticed here in the first half, after timeouts, Penn State has scored, I think, on two of three possessions. This is the fourth after a timeout. Important for them maybe to get a hoop here. They're down by six points, 320 to play in the first half. Carter backs his way in and makes the shot and a big bucket for Penn State to close within four. Brandaway. Baker looking for Jackson. He's running off the screens right now and accepts it out deep. Penn State playing a little matchup zone here. The key to attacking the zone is you must get in the gaps like that. Well, Baker misses badly. Brandewe rebounds and flips it back out to Jamal Brown. That's one of the weaknesses of the zone is that you don't have individual blockout assignments. And it's, a good off it's a good defense for a good offensive rebounder to attack. Jackson says, see you later to Clark Kellogg. <laughs> He's got 16. He needed 15 to pass Clark Kellogg in the Ohio State record books. <laughs> as far as scoring goes. That's right. Not That's right. Make sure you clarify that. <laughs> it's painful, isn't it? Not really. <laughs> when a guy as good as he is. You bet. Boy, great luck. The foul. And I believe it was on a three-point attempt. Well, how strong has Jimmy Jackson been in his great career? Clark Kellogg was one of the best ever at Ohio State, 1,285 points. Boy, you are a young-looking guy. <laughs> well, they pulled that one out of the archives. <laughs> you can see it's black and white. They didn't have color back then. <laughs> <laughs> it has been 10 years. <laughs> The All-American, 15 points, 6 of 11 from the floor. Uh, I, I thought they gave him a 3, so I give him 16, I believe. Well, they've got 31, so it was a 2. Regardless, he did pass Clark. <laughs> Monroe Brown, Aberdeen, Maryland. You know, talking to Monroe Brown and Freddie Barnes, you could tell they were ready to go for this one. They won't get a chance to play in the Big Ten, being seniors. So this is their audition for the Big Ten Conference here tonight. It's an audition and a closing act all in one. Yeah, Bruce Parkhill was a little disappointed that they were not accepted into the Big Ten right away. He saw other clubs moving into their conferences right away. Gent misses. You know, where you look around the country and you talk about Miami in the Big East, Florida State in the ACC, Arkansas and South Carolina in the SEC, South Florida, UNCC in the Metro, and you wonder why it didn't happen with Penn State. So you're saying he's got an argument. I think he can make a case. <laughs> well, they're making a case right now, playing against Ohio State, the already beaten Big Ten team this year, Illinois. And Gent grabs the miss. Ohio State leads by four as Chris Jett goes down hard. 
Well, coming up halftime, we'll take a look at all the college basketball scores with John Saunders and a look at Michigan's fabulous five. And I had an opportunity to see them earlier this year. That Michigan group of Jalen Rose and Jimmy King and Chris Weber, Jawan Howard, and you can go on and on with it. And they said North Carolina last year was the best-looking freshman. I have never seen a group of freshmen as talented as this group of Michigan. Well, it's amazing, you know. Players just continue to come and come and get better and better. But clearly, this Michigan flag could be a very special class. I really think they're going to cause headaches for everybody they play, despite their youth. They sure caused a headache for Duke before losing there. And Jackson getting it to Baker, who drives that baseline to get fouled, and he'll be at the free throw line. Mark Baker showing you some little, a little show and tell here. Show it, pull it down, hang, and almost got it to go. Excellent work by Baker to draw the foul. And Baker right now, in the first half, has seven points. In his last two games, he has totaled just 11. He's a key guy for this Buckeye squad. Remember last year when he went down in that Indiana game and Really, the entire ball club was never the same. Well, he's key because he can put so much pressure on the defense because of his ability to get by his man and create opportunities for other people. And if he can consistently knock down the jump shot, then he's even more effective. Well, he's got nine points and pushes Ohio State's lead to 33-27. There's stoppage in play. And the buzzer sounded and should not have because there was no substitution coming in. They did not reset the 45-second clock, so they'll do that right now. Well, there's really no need to reset it. Yeah, there's only 29 seconds right. left, and that's just what the uh, official scorer at right. the table said. There's no reason to have it on, and, I, and the officials, along with myself, had not looked up and seen the 29 ticking away. You know, that's one reason I'd like to see the second clock above the scoreboard go to the 45, go to the regulation, so the players can see it better. Yeah. Good now they've point. got to look into the corner to see how much time's left. Excellent work here by Penn State. They're going to make sure they get to the last one here. Monroe Brown. Oh, what a play by Monroe. <laughs> and the Buckeyes lead by just four as we go to commercial. Penn State, who pulled that unbelievable. And part of the reason for that was Monroe Brown and Freddie Barnes. Here you see Monroe Brown led in the first half. Really has had a solid floor game. Three of six, two of two from the strike. Knocked down the only three-pointer for the Nittany Lions and has played good at the defensive end of the floor as well. He's played both the two-guard spot and the point-guard spot when Freddie Brown Barnes went on with two fouls. Ohio State comes out with Jackson, Gent, Jamal Brown, Bill Robinson, and Mark Baker. Penn State counters with Freddie Barnes, Eric Carr, Deron Hayes, David Deggett, Monroe Brown. Look for Ohio State to really try to throw a knockout blow here at Penn State early. And Penn State turns it over. That's their sixth of the game. Penn State can ill afford many empty possessions. You say it so often, it's kind of redundant. But when you are the underdog, you really have to start each half so well. That first five minutes. And that's why Penn State's time right now is very critical. There's David Deggett's no turnovers in the first half and Penn State down from their season total of 54. Penn State is up by one. Baker down low and Bill Robinson will be fouled as sliding over to try and help out defensively was Eric Carr and Duran Hayes. And Hayes really had a great start to this ball game, eight quick points, and that was really rather quiet in the final 10 minutes. Well, he's still got nine shots up, and as you say, Steve, most of those early in the first half, but he'll get his opportunity. Thrown away, and they say it went off a of Penn State and Indy line. I thought Jackson might have been the last man to touch it. Bruce Parko. Looks like Ohio State really trying to post Jimmy Jackson. Take advantage of his size and strength inside. 
See, to counter Jimmy Jackson posting up, if you're Penn State, I think you would maybe try to front him and then sag in and get some help inside. And Bill Robinson with the left hand gives the Buckeyes a six-point lead. That ties their biggest advantage of the game at 35-29. Daggett's knocked away Jamal Brown. No call. Gent picks up Monroe Brown. And Brown is now chasing Deron Hayes. This is Hayes. He scores from the baseline. Jamal had slid back to help out on the interior. Well, you have to keep Hayes away from the baseline. He loves those baseline jump shots and those elbow jump shots right at the corner of the free throw line. Jackson down low at the pretty feed to Chris Gent. Well, they break the pressure. Brown in on Robinson. Reverse layup will go. And Bill Robinson watches Eric Carr hook it in. It's a four-point game again at 37-33. Boy, nice look by Dave Deggett to throw it over Mark Baker and create the transition opportunity. They don't get the initial thrust, but when you have numbers, you're able to get offensive rebounds. Mark Baker is hurt. I tell you what, he was he was dehydrated last week, spent some time in the hospital, just didn't have any fluid, and maybe suffering some ill effects from that bout with the flu. Well, Alex Davis has to come and replace him. He was on the All-Big Ten freshman team two years ago, but injured his knee and also suffered a back problem when he came back from the knee. He has never really been at full strength. They feel he is now, but it's just playing time that he's trying to get back to his freshman form. Jimmy Jackson on the point where he can look over defenders or back them down to get his own shot. There's the steal. Just the fourth turnover by Ohio State in this game. He's veteran ball club. Battling here at St. John Arena in Columbus, Ohio. A three could make it a one-point game. Freddie Barnes backing out as Alex Davis defense. Down low, Degas can't finish, and Robinson rebounds. Jackson almost double dribbled. And they've really closed down on Brown. He has been quiet. And he's really working hard defensively, chasing Deron Hayes around to start this second half. It's 39-33, Ohio State. Jim Jackson now has 17 points, and Brown, who has been held to just four in this contest, will get a breather. Here you take a look at Jimmy Jackson. One dribble pull-up. And Ohio yeah. State forced a turnover. Freddie Barnes was called for the offensive foul. And he goes again, this time missing, and the rebound goes to Eric Carr. He's the best leaper on Penn State. Deron Hayes, he's heating up again. Well, you can mark those up when he catches the ball on the baseline or at the elbow in rhythm. Gent trying to go down low to Jimmy Jackson, but it was closed up. Knocked out to Alex Davis, who strokes it in. You always like your players if they can get a hand on the ball to try to maintain possession themselves. Deggett's tried to tip it to a teammate and got it to Davis for the open jump shot. If you get a paw on it, reel it in. Daggett's trying to back his way in, flips it out deep. And when it's finally picked up by Freddie Barnes, that will be David Daggett's first turnover of the game, and he's already played 24 minutes of this contest. Ohio State has a 41 30 Ohio State leads it by six. But you want to talk about good half-court execution. Watch this weak side screen down by Eric Carr to free Deron Hayes for his favorite spot on the floor, the elbow jump shot. Penn State wants to do that on a regular basis. Good half-court execution. Deron Hayes having a good shooting night thus far, 6 of 11. Coming up a 23-point game against Marshall. Penn State came in tonight, 8 and 2. Ohio State with that one loss at USC. Jimmy Jackson working on Hayes. Oh, he is something. 
special. Everybody says that had he been available for the Pan Am Games in that last two contests, you, the United States would have had the goal. But had this fresh fracture and had to sit out the final two. Critical juncture now. You talk about the start, the finish, the start of the second half. Penn State down eight. Gaudio trying to outfight Bill Robinson, but can't. Alex Davis to Chent. Rebound. And when Monroe Brown grabbed it, he smacked it against the glass. Hayes working against Davis. Boy, Bill Robinson doing a nice job inside for the buck. Claudio. Did he travel? No, he was fouled. Jimmy Jackson said, hey, he walked. But Gaudio has a chance for a three-point play. <laughs> well, I tell you what, that's a big-time play. You talk about locking your pivot foot down. Let's take a look. Gaudio, the left foot is the pivot foot. Keep your eye on it. Oh, he walked. He got he oh, walked he twice. all over the place. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was a great move. But <laughs> he got away. Hey, but it's always a great move when they don't call it. Great replay, guys. <laughs> because, <laughs> Mr. Gaudio, you are very lucky to be at that strike. But he's there, and that's what makes him a winner. He's got the three-point play, and it's a five-point game. See, everybody talks about the block charge being the toughest call for the official. The walk call is by far the toughest in my mind. Sometimes you're so locked onto the ball in the upper body Whoa. that you Alex miss the Davis. feet. He's feeling it now. He averaged close to 11 his freshman year. He's got a honey sweet stroke. Real sweet. sweet stroke. Barnes against Brown. Got around him and gets fouled. Will be at the free throw line. Is that Jimmy Jackson? I believe they've called, yes, they've called it against Jimmy Jackson, and a howl of boos come cascading down from St. John, number one team in the nation with a test from Virginia. Georgia Tech leads at the half over Richmond. Notre Dame stumbling to Kentucky. Seven-point lead for the Wildcats. Here, Freddie Barnes at the free throw line to try and cut a seven-point lead to five. Jimmy Jackson with personal foul, number three. Nice screen there by Deck. It's actually Bill Robinson screened his own man, and Jimmy reached in and was whistled for the foul. So it's a five-point game with 14 minutes to play. Both these teams rarely in air. Davis with a great pass. They said he wasn't a point guard, but he showed his four cents right there. Now St. John Arena saying, can you handle Ohio State and can you handle us? Because it's gotten loud here in Columbus. And a foul will quiet the crowd as Prince Gent picks up his second. <laughs> he doesn't like it. Actually got bumped into the Penn State player by a teammate. I got to say this about Chris Gent. When you walked on the floor at the shoot around today, he goes, oh, no. Every time Clark's run, I've shot four for 19, I think, when you're here. <laughs> the defense, a little more intense by Ohio State. Monroe Brown takes it himself. Gaudio with the save. Gaudio may have stepped in the sideline. No. Was it an elbow? Or I, was it the sideline? I think you were right. The baseline, he stepped yeah. on. But he may have gotten bumped, as you see Bruce Parkhill conferring with one of the officials, wondering where was the call on the push. There's Gent. Well, maybe it is you, Clark, because he's now two of seven from the floor. Well, he's got a nice-looking stroke, and I don't have much to do with what happens between <laughs> those lines. Well, not the kind of shot Randy has wanted on that possession, trying to stretch a lead, one pass and a three. And Roe Brown with Jackson on him. Penn State, an experienced club. They've got three seniors on the floor. Deron Hayes with the drive. Oh, what a 
a shot. <laughs> well, 14 point for Deron Hayes. Jent turns it off to Jackson, and he's taken him. Alex Davis. Oh, get it to him. Well, he's three for his last three, and maybe the rest of his mates will start looking his way. I tell you what, he's the guy that I could just come and watch shoot just because of the beauty of the stroke. Monroe Brown hits the three, and we've got a four-point game again. You know, the one thing that impresses you so much about Penn State, you better beat them because they're not going to beat themselves. They're solid. They're rock solid, playing just the way they want to play here tonight. And an amazing statistic is that they've won four out of five games in buildings that have 10,000 or more people. They've got Illinois at Illinois when they're down by 16. They came from behind to win by five. 49-45, Ohio State has the lead to Penn State with the basketball. Degich, defense by Bill Robinson. The Ohio State, if they're going to disrupt Penn State, they have to really challenge the basketball. If you let Penn State pass and cut and move, they're going to wear you down and typically get the kind of shot they want. Gaudio down low gets fouled by Robinson. See, that's exactly what happens. I don't know what the shot clock was at when they finally made their thrust to the goal, but you get tired of chasing guys around when they're swinging the ball from side to side. Back cut here by Barnes. Help comes, he finds the weak side player, Matt Gaudio, and Big Bill Robinson picks up the foul with the body. That is his fourth, and that could be key. He's had an outstanding game here tonight. Well, Bill Robinson will have to sit down, and Chris Gent will come out as well. Steve Hall comes in along with Tom Brandaway. Now, you wonder with those substitutions, will Ohio State become a little more active defensively? You know, you're talking about their patience. And I thought the whole statement you were using sounds a little like Pete Carroll in Princeton. Similar. They just wear you out. They will. It's almost like Chris Everett standing back on the baseline. Just slamming them back at Waiting you. for you to make a mistake. Yeah. And when you're a team that likes to play up tempo, it's important to be patient defensively. Gaudio makes one of two. It's a three-point game at the 10-40 mark. And now here's Jackson. He's at the point. Tough matchup here for Deitch. <laughs> Although he's a, he's a veteran player. Somebody free Alex Davis. Jamal Brown. Oh, and he got hit on the side by Matt Gaudio. Bruce Parker was saying this fellow real student of the game, Matt Gaudio, the way he steps up, plays defense. It's a real feel for the game. This time, too much of a feel, and he commits the foul. His first of the game. Two gentlemen. No, check that. It's his second foul of the game. And it sends Jamal Brown to the free throw line, who shoots 76%. Really is a steady, steady player. Well, this is his 104th straight start. A brilliant four-year career here at Ohio State. And he's so solid that you almost overlook him. Randy Ayers applauding his team, who has pushed the lead to five on Penn State. It's 51-46, Ohio State with the lead on Penn State with 10-21 to go. And Penn State trying to handle that Ohio State pressure. Strong shooting in the second half by both ball clubs. Ohio State has been brilliant all year long. The season average is right at 54%. Ohio State showing a little zone defense. They're primarily a man-to-man -man team, showing a 3-2 now. Barnes out at the top. He has nine assists in the game. You know, they've probably gone to the zone to maybe give Jackson some rest. He's actually played the whole game. And coming down the stretch in a close game, you don't want him worn out. Freddie Barnes, as the shot clock was winding down, takes the three 
and a foul is called on Matt Gaudio. Well, Barnes had to put it up. The clock was down to three seconds remaining. He fired the three, misses, and Gaudio picks up his third foul. Take a look at Barnes as he tries to shoot the three, fighting the shot clock. There it is at the top, two, and he had to let it go and almost got it. It was right on line, just strong. And then Gaudio, in his effort to get to the loose ball, fouled Tom Brandewick. That Gaudio came into this game averaging better than eight points per game, a freshman, West Virginia. And Jimmy Jackson, this is the time of the game where he starts really turning it up a notch. And he he could not to the point. Excuse me, Steve. He could be the difference. This is a tight game. Randy has him out on the point so he can distribute the ball. <laughs> oh, oh! Alex Davis stroking it. He's hit four straight shots. But that's what can happen when there's so much attention on the guy handling the ball. The lead is eight for Ohio State. That's the biggest margin of this game. Inside nine minutes to play now. Mark Baker on the sideline with Prince. He's the outstanding point guard for the Buckeyes, but Alex Davis has stepped in to play the wing, and Jimmy Jackson's gone to the point. Gaudio, tough shot, but he puts it through, and it's, again, a six-point affair. Well, I tell you what, Ohio State might be better served to play the zone when Ohio State goes to their man. The man, Penn State, doing a nice job of making good, solid screens and getting good post position. The zone might be the Buckeyes' best defense down the street. Jamal Brown, a three-pointer. He has been quiet since early in this contest, but Jamal Brown now with nine for the game. Buckeyes looking to really try to break it open here. And, you know, they're a perimeter team, it seems like. And Penn State's more inside-outside, aren't they? Exactly. Deron Hayes counts the basket. This is their way of getting a three-point play. Yeah, they grunt and groan for their threes. Really don't have a consistent threat. Brown and Barnes will look at the three, but good individual move by Deron Hayes. Shoehorns along the baseline, hangs a little bit, and able to draw contact from Hall and maintain concentration and finish inside. The Lions just will not go away. Jimmy Jackson will get a little rest as Hayes at the free throw line. Missing. And he's got 17 points in the game. So the score is 57-50 inside eight minutes to go. Baker back in. He's playing with cramps. Jenny with a pretty move down the lane. A south ball puts it down. Ron Hayes bringing it into the forecourt. He's been so effective throughout this game. Team high 17. Down low. And with the foul, Steve Hall. It's David Deggett's trying to get low and posting up. Catching the Buckeyes scrambling, Barnes with a little pseudo penetration finds Dave Deggett. And he's able to go strong to the rack and draw the foul. Penn State not the type of team, although they came back from 16 down to beat Illinois, really more like a running football team in the sense that they don't have that explosion that you like to see when you're talking about trying to get back in it. They're going to have to kind of grind it out and maintain contact. If the Buckeyes push this to double digits, the Lions might be in big trouble. They need the passing game. They have 23 remaining in this basketball game. Ohio State clinging to a seven-point lead after last year's Big Ten championship team that tied with Indiana lost Perry Carter and Craig Lee. A lot of people were saying, where's the beef? Well, there he is, and they'll get the beef next week. He is a slender 225, but Lars Funderburg is all man when you watch him play. These were the six games he played with Indiana. 11 and a half points per game and six and a half rebounds before he left. And that has been his history. He wins a state championship at Columbus Whirly, then quit the team in his senior year. 
Well, he certainly had some problems, but he seems to be fitting in well here, and he's the guy that can take Ohio State to the next level. Him along with Mark Baker at the point guard position, but Thunderbird will hopefully give them that inside threat and force they need to complement their strong perimeter game. And right now, Alex Davis and Jamal Brown really contributing factors in this game as Davis is at four for four and Brown hit a three a little while ago and just hit a two. Mark Baker back in the game as Ohio State has pushed the lead to nine. Freddie Barnes off to Monroe Brown who can't finish. And Steve Hall clears it. Jamal Brown with the pull up and then pushes it back when a hand was in his face. Gent missing short tries to chase it down and it kicks off his foot out of bounds. Penn State will get the basketball down by nine with 6.15 to go. Bill Robinson comes back in with Jimmy Jackson. And you wonder which team's getting fatigued, Clark. Well, Randy's done a nice job substituting as you take a look at great hustle by Steve Hall. Almost made a nice save on that play. Yeah, we only saw two white shirts going after that basketball. You wonder if Penn State's beginning to wear down. Final 6-15 of this game, and Ohio State's putting on the pressure again. Well, Penn State has elected just to break the pressure and not really look to attack the basket. Ohio State with 16 fouls. Penn State needs to be trying to operate in the paint, maybe get themselves in the bonus situation so they can get to the line. David Deggett walks with the ball. Boy, a strong move by Dave Deggett. You know, he missed four games after the season opener against Illinois. Here you take a look. Let's see if he did walk. Yeah, yeah. A little bunny hop. Well, they've got ten turnovers now. They had just five in the first half. Mark Baker. But I started to say about Deggett, he missed the four games after the Illinois game and just has started to play again and still doesn't have his full conditioning or his timing. And you've seen that evidence here in the second half. You know, Bruce Parker was saying that we really haven't had the continuity with the team. And because of that, our confidence is not at the same level as we opened the year beating Illinois with. Well, they've been banged up all year. You talk about Gaudio with his problem. Deggett's missing four games. Jennings is out for the year. Jackson, he nails it again. Well, it's so nice to have a player that can manufacture shots. He's got 21. I remember visiting with George Raveling when we did that UFC game, and he said, Jackson's a great player on an unusual team. And he meant that by saying everybody knows their role, and they also know when it's time to go to Jimmy. They know who the man is. <laughs> and he is just that. John Deep back in. Now down low to Claudio. He drops that shot in. He is a clever low post player. He really is. He'll show you the drop step. The little leaner in the paint. Only a freshman. Jimmy Jackson has now scored at least 20 points in every game this year. Oh, he thought his man was going to cut to the baseline. Instead, Mark Baker went out towards the wing. And Jackson threw it right over. So that's the fifth turnover against Ohio State. Only five in this game. And we played better than... What is it now? 35 minutes. 4.36 to go. Gent comes back in. For Brandoy. See, this is a situation where you've got to attack the goal now. And Fox will do that. And Robinson has fouled out. Bill Robinson with a strong defensive game tonight, but fouls out of the contest with 4.30 to go. Well, Freddie Barnes coming right at you. Nice move to get by Baker. And then Robinson, boy, he makes a great play on the ball up top. And then slugs our cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at it again from a different angle. Boy, I tell you what, that's a pretty tough call against Robinson because the play up top was clean. Maybe a brush contact with the body, but tough break for Big Bill. He is so important to this club, particularly when they get to that physical Big Ten. Penn State is going to be a physical team, but they have some young interior players. Brandon, comes back in for him. 
the thing about conference play is that the intensity level goes up about four notches. Everybody knows everybody else so well that your strengths are usually taken away from you. So that's why you have to have solid players in the seven, eight, and nine position. You have to have other people step up in addition to your marquee players because conference play is far more intense and people know what you like to do and a lot of times they're able to force you to do other things. Well, Freddie Barnes has six points and he will take a seat. Barnes has nine assists for the game. You saw a season average. He's below that but has played a marvelous four game and leading this Penn State ball club. Nittany Lions down by seven. Jackson against Hayes. Gent rebounds. And Gent can't finish it, but he will be at the line for two foul shots. Chris Gent, an 80% foul shooter. High school All-American at Sparta High School, where he averaged 29 points a game. Best effort was for 55, but here he has really been an excellent role player for Randy Ayers. Brings a lot of energy to the court. Experience. Playing a little bit out of position now. He's really a three guy who's been starting at the power forward position for the Buckeyes as they go with basically a three guard offense. Gent, you heard what he said. Get in there and it did. <laughs> and it's a nine point Buckeye lead. It ties their biggest margin of the game. Hall comes back in for defense. He is their best interior defender. Randy has really done a marvelous job with the Ohio State ball club. When you think of one word that really typifies Buckeyes, you think of solid. That's, that's Randy Ayers' buzzword if he ever had one, is solid on and off the court. Great deal of poise they play with. Nothing flashy until they have to be. Here's Gaudio getting back door and scoring! You really got to like this young fella. Matt Gaudio. Got 10 points now. He's close to seven again at the three and a half minute mark. Gent is trying to find Brandway or rather Hall flashing through the lane, but it was tipped away by a Nittany Lions. That's six turnovers for the Buckeyes. Deron Hayes. He has been quieted in the last five minutes. We're already 25 seconds into the shot clock. And a foul by an offensive player away from the basketball. It looks like Steve Weidman. Bruce Parkhill has seen his club commit their 17 foul. And that will send Ohio State into the bonus situation. So Weidman will come out of the game. Weidman explaining to his teammates what happened. So Chris Gent, who we just saw nail two free throws and shoots 80% of the year. The south ball back to the line. He holds it nine, and the lead remains seven for Ohio State. Baker checks Freddie Barnes. Gaudio is out of there, and they brought back into the contest Elton Carter. Twenty seconds of the shot clock. Really trying to work Deron Hayes free. Well, he is. Baker to Jamal Brown. Jim will fly by Carter, and a foul's going to be called on Elton Carter. Randy is calling over Chris Jen. And you wonder, at this particular time, if he's talking defense to Chris... Chris just gets his body by Carter, and the little bump foul sends Gent back to the line. You got his mates together while you're watching the replay and talking to 
relaying the instructions that Randy Air sent his way. One gentleman. Coming up next for Ohio State, they have Michigan State next Tuesday in a game you can watch on ESPN. We've got a time on the floor, just 2.12 to play. The Ohio State Buckeyes with a nine-point... You see those Big Ten championship banners hanging here at St. John Arena. And Penn State will join this basketball conference next year. Football will join in 1993. Penn State, Bruce Parker was saying that they are getting kids now that they could not recruit before simply because they have joined the Big Ten Conference. Well, it's a high-profile conference, one of the strongest conferences in the league, has been for years and years, and that's got to help you recruiting. And they're getting that new arena, too. That's right. That should be ready in 93, I guess. They're going to have to upgrade their caliber of player, obviously, not that they don't have solid players now, but when you talk about night in and night out against the Big Ten competition, they're going to have to get some big-time players. Deron Hayes with an impatient shot almost got it to fall. And it's out of bounds to Penn State with a new 45-second clock as Chris Gent goes flying out of bounds. Bruce Parkhill, what a job he has done. Three straight 20-win seasons at Penn State and last year's Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year. Yeah, he's done an outstanding job and being in the Big Ten certainly will help his recruiting effort as he looks to get ready to compete at this level. Hayes misses again. And the Buckeyes trying to put this game in the deep freeze with a minute 37 to go. Jackson walking the ball up the floor. The All-American with 21 points in the game. Then it's going to spread it out. They've got three pretty good ball handlers out there. Actually four. Davis, Gent, Brown, and Jackson. Right now time more important than points. And they will work the clock down. Now Brown goes, has it knocked away, and a foul call. So Jamal Brown goes to the line as Elton Carter complains his position, saying he got all ball. But Carter will commit personal foul number three. Oh, what a high school team he played on, Southwestern High School in Detroit. Jalen Rose is playing at Michigan, who I think is going to be brilliant for those Wolverines. Oh, they've got an outstanding young club. You know, and everybody talks about their youth, and they're going to have tough, a tough time on the road. That might be true just to a point. I mean, these guys are close-knit, and they can play. And they believe in themselves, and they want to prove people wrong in terms of what their youth is going to do to them on the court. Steve Hall, reverse lane. Bruce Parkhill sending in the offensive instructions. But the fans beginning to file out of St. John's, feeling comfortable that this game will be there. Deron Hayes says, not so fast. He nails the three and makes it a 69-61 contest with 45 seconds to play. Right after this contest, we'll be taking you to Purdue and North Carolina, the eighth-ranked Tar Heels. We are talking about the great freshmen. Classes in the country, North Carolina, is beginning to see their freshmen come to life. That's Purdue in North Carolina. Coming up next, Bob Carpenter and Dan Bonner waiting patiently for that contest to begin. And then it's Sports Center. Coming up with Bob Lee and Dan Patrick at 11 o'clock, followed by our third game of our triple header, Weber State against Montana. But Ohio State, true to their experience, has been very poised in this contest. And they will open against Michigan State next week, who really has been a surprise, I think, in the Big Ten after losing their outstanding guard, Steve Smith, to the NBA. Ohio State, what they have right now, Clark, perimeter depth and experience. And you see how they exploit that is with 40 minutes of intensity and clutch performances. But even tonight, I would have to add that depth showed itself to be very positive for the Buckeyes and that Alex Davis comes off the bench and knocks down nine second half points. And when you've got that kind of depth, you know you can get contributions from a lot of different places. And you were saying if they can get more consistency from the perimeter, they'll be a better club. And Davis allows, it really opens up the room for Jackson and for Jamal Brown. They complement each other so well. You know, you talk Jackson, you talk Brown, Baker, Davis, gentle slide on the perimeter but those four guards 
Brown has shot the ball extremely well. Alex Davis is a great shooter. And Jimmy Jackson is a guy who can handle the ball and find those guys when they get themselves open. So they really work well together as a unit. And then, of course, next week, as we said, all throughout this telecast, Lawrence Funderburk becomes available. And you know one of the great things, and you, you brought it up today when we were at the shoot-around, he goes, check out who Lawrence hangs around with at practice. That fellow right there, who is uh, the epitome of a team leader. No question about it. And I think that's what's going to help Lawrence Funderburk settle into his position here at Ohio State. The star is established. That is Jimmy Jackson. He's the undisputed leader of the club. And everybody has to toe the line with Jimmy Jackson. Those two guys get along well, and they're going to help each other's games. And Jimmy understands that. And I think Lawrence Funderburk understands that Jimmy Jackson can be great for him, too. Jackson's going to get fouled and go back to the line where J.J. tonight has 22 points. See, Funderburk will not have to come in and make a major splash right away because a good portion of the burden is already being carried by number 22. So he has to just step in and fit in. And time will tell whether he's done that. All reports and indications are that he's ready to go, that he's done everything that the coaching staff has asked of him. And now it's just a matter of sharpening his skills because he's got plenty of them. Jackson's got 23 points. Closing moments here at St. John Arena in Columbus. Freddie Barnes goes to Deron Hayes, who fires the three and misses. Jackson tries to tip it to himself instead. It flies widely into the hands of Alex Davis, and a foul will be called on Monroe Brown. A 10-point Ohio State lead with 21.1 seconds remaining. Coming your way this weekend, we've got NFL game day on Saturday. It will be at its regular 11.30 in the morning time. And our NFL prime time on Saturday is at 7.30. That's a half hour later. Then on Sunday, a special noonday start with our NFL prime time at the regular 7.30. That's Sunday on ESPN. That's Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Joe Theismann. Well, the Buckeye faithful are happy the Buckeyes have put this one away. And I am, too because these guys were on my case about being a jinx because I had seen three games recently and they had lost all three. I had broadcast two of them and they had lost both of those and now they will not be able to use me as an excuse for a loss. Well, with the basket is Elton Carter. Yeah, you even admit it. You said, hey. I know I, I was the one who said, you've got to get that monkey off your back. And you said, no, they've got to get the monkey <laughs> off my back. Well, Ohio State has had a strong contribution from their bench in this contest. Brandaway, Robinson fouled out. To play a very effective game defensively. Yeah, he really did a nice job, especially at the defensive end in the paint. He blocked a couple of shots and changed two or three others. It's Jamie Skelton and Ricky Dudley. Last play you saw before we went back to our wide shot, Dudley is a freshman from the Texas area, a real strong kid who reminds a lot of people of Craig Lee and Perry Carter. Oh, he's got a great body. There's no question he ranks right with those guys in terms of his body. All right, Penn State with a timeout. 11.6 seconds remaining. Buckeyes by 10. But I thought it was interesting that Bobby Knight recommended him at Army. <laughs> Bob Knight's old school. Went there, assistant coach, and came back here to work with Gene or Elton Miller. Now he's taken over. Well, Jim Jackson's winding it down here. And Ohio State will win tonight 73-63. Randy Ayers goes to 52-18. And Clark Kellogg, the Buckeyes, impressive as they head towards the Big Ten campaign. They were challenged tonight, which is good going into the Big Ten season, but never really threatened. It's time to play the, play the games in the conference now. And next week, they'll get Lawrence Funderburg back. But tonight, they beat a future Big Ten foe, Penn State by 10, 73-63. For Clark Kellogg, I'm Steve Fiziak. Now let's go back with 23 points Clark thank you very much Steve. You. it seems like you really wanted to rub that in tonight Jimmy you passed me but that's not important on the scoring chart here at Ohio State seemed to me like you were a little more aggressive in the first half offensively was that by design or did you just feel like your team needed you to step it up earlier um, I think uh, I got to come out a little bit earlier take my shots I felt more comfortable and confident I can step up there and take my shots and, and when I do that that allows my teammates to get open and, and we can get rolling that way 
Talk a little bit about this Penn State club. A lot of people nationally may not know about them. Were you surprised at all by how tough they played you guys tonight? Not really because, uh, you know, they're only averaging 67 points a game. They want to control tempo. So we watched a lot of films on them, and they kind of slowed it down. They played it their way, but I think, uh, you know, we stay tough, and, and they're a tough team, especially coming to the Big Ten uh, uh, next year, and they're going to surprise a lot of people this year. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Big Ten season. You have your partner and friend, Lawrence Thunderberg, in the lineup come next Tuesday. Talk a little bit about what he's going to do, not only for the Buckeyes, but for you as an individual player. Um, as far as for our team, uh, he takes a lot of responsibility off of Bill Robinson inside. That allows him to score, and, uh, and Lawrence is a great scorer himself. He can go inside and outside. And that always uh, allows me to find somebody open down low that can finish plays, you know, with a dunk and uh, uh, hopefully three-point plays for us. All right, Jimmy, thanks a lot for stopping out tonight. Good luck in the Big Ten season. Yeah, thanks a lot. Okay, let's head back to my partner, Steve. Thank you, Clark. Again, the final score, 73-63, Ohio State over Penn State. Nice.